We're going to record. Let's go. All righty. Um, smoke signal marketing update for 23 April. Um, I have a few things I want to share with the community. Um, firstly, we've seen um, the most amount of users on smoke signal uh, since the analytics has started tracking. I'm going to share my screen briefly just to show that. Um, so as we can see here, um, I'm just looking at the period 1 April to 22 April because analytics hasn't been running that long. Um, but we can see a massive spike um, in traffic over there. Um, the, I mean, we used to hover around 27, 24, 142. You know, these are when posts happen, but we can see a very clear increase in traffic then. That's also when um, when we really started pushing the, the Facebook and the Reddit ads. Um, and when Logan also did his post um, on the Ethereum subreddit. So we've seen some great activity there, uh, which is which is a good thing. Um, then I also wanted to share a bit more on the analytics with the community. So let's look at the geo uh, location based stuff. And I'm specifically going to sort this not by, you know, the number of users that we get to the site, but rather uh, the goal completions. Um, maybe I should, should just quickly touch on the goal completion. So basically what we do is um, we track um, multiple different goals in smoke signal. Um, although we have about 30 events that fire as you use the platform, um, these goals are specific things that we want people to perform that um, give us a wanted action. So if you connect MetaMask or if post DX mines, mining starts, um, all those valuable actions are recorded as goals. Um, so when we look at uh, the number of goals that are completed, um, when I sort by goals completed, these were uh, people that didn't only go to the site, but also actually did something we want them to do. Now, um, obviously, South Africa is the first one in the list, us being here and testing the site and also working on it. That, that would make sense. But what's really promising is if we look at more of these countries, um, we can see that multiple other countries are actually starting to also uh, performing actions on the site, which I mean is what we want. Um, and it's also a very uh, good um, signal that we look at uh, to know that the traffic that we're sending to smoke signal is relevant and it's actually starting to convert into something. Um, so that was also quite interesting to see. Um, I've already covered the goals and the events. I'm just making sure I, I go through my whole list here. Um, and then um, the last thing that I just want to briefly show the community is the behavior and events that we look at in the analytics. Um, these are now the goals, but just a full list of the stuff that people perform on the site. And um, one of the things that we have now started doing is to actually um, build funnels to see if the traffic, you know, we engage with users from a platform, they click onto the site, um, which of these events are triggered and which ones do they perform to try and sort of build those funnels and see um, how we get the users into actually using the platform and not only making them aware of it. Um, so that was also quite interesting to see. Uh, Skok, specific questions from you on this at this stage? Um, let me quickly think here. Uh, just a quick question on the bump that we saw there. Um, was that bump largely due to Logan's post or was it largely due to um, our advertising? And that's a good question. So we can look at the acquisition. Um, and so this is 100% of the users uh, in this period now. Um, if we quickly take that bump, uh, let's just quickly see which period that should be. If we go from the 19th to the 22nd of um, April to see what the bump was about, uh, you'll see that um, the post definitely did create traction. So unfortunately, a stupid thing that Google Analytics does, um, it categorizes uh, Reddit as social. Um, okay. 
which it isn't necessarily. So you can see that, um, and remember the paid ads that we ran for Reddit um, is also now part of this um, part of this uh, category here. So um, we did see quite a few users from from Logan's post. Um, most of them came from the ad, but what we did see was um, people that came from the post tend to perform more wanted actions. In other words, it's a better kind of user going to the site. Uh, so the, no, just to answer the original question, the bump was not only because of the post, it was because of multiple other marketing um, initiatives that we are running. Awesome. Okay, well then I don't have any more questions. Okay, um, so I'll continue with another quick um, thing that I just want to mention. Um, when we started off with the smoke signal of Google and a little Google ads, uh, just to quickly refresh on why we did that, um, if somebody searches for smoke signal, um, you know, everything that we see here isn't necessarily relevant to, or people don't find the site. So we started running the ad on, on the name itself. And one thing that I was able to see on, on Google ad impressions is that this used to be very low. Uh, we used to get basically nobody searching for it. And now um, we're actually in the hundreds of impressions of people now Googling for the name and then performing some sort of um, action on the site, which means we're making people aware of the name um, and that they can search for it again and go and find it. So this is also just to show again, you know, even if you uh, touch somebody on Reddit or Facebook or Brave or where, what, um, one of these platforms, you have to you have to be sort of available on all the other um, marketing um, platforms as well so mm. that they can see you on one platform and then again on another. And that's when they then decide to start using, using your tools. So um, that was just also an interesting thing to mention. Um, yeah, then a quick, uh, so these are in terms of stat feedbacks. Quick um, other things that I just want to briefly touch on is that um, we've been having some real challenges with Facebook and Reddit approving our ads and allowing us to actually use their advertising platforms. Um, Reddit, Facebook's actually been the one that, that has approved the ads and we've been running consistently now for, for about a week, but we're really struggling on Reddit. Um, and one of the things is that I think um, the smokesignal.eth.link uh, has been flagged on their system. So it doesn't matter how I'm trying to modify those Reddit ads, um, they just keep on blocking them saying that we're violating their financial policy. Um, and I think it might be because that link has been flagged on the system and it sort of just sees it's the same link. And how do you, briefly on, how do you think it got flagged originally? Um, so it, it got flagged when we added, so the ad started running um, and then we added a second category to the Reddit ads um, for people that are interested in cryptocurrency. So initially we only targeted people on Reddit interested in, in tech computer science, mm -hmm. but then we wanted to target cryptocurrency based users because that's way more relevant. And every time you add, you modify an ad on Reddit, it has to be reapproved. Um, and so when we did that change, the reapproval uh, process started and then they declined it. And after then I've been trying probably 10 different changes with different variations of the ad, even removing the words wallet completely. And they immediately just sort of block all the ads and they just send us the same message. So I'm thinking um, the URL might be flagged. Mm -hmm. um, and the There's reason something, why- yeah, The thing is they saw something on our site originally that, um, that basically caused the flagging. Yes, and, and it, it's, this, it's this part right here. Um, Reddit does not allow you to okay. uh, advertise products that connect to wallets um, on their platform. They do allow cryptocurrency, but they don't allow wallet connecting platforms or platforms that use wallets. And because SmokeSignal requires you to connect, um, you know, a MetaMask wallet, I think that that section might have um, triggered, um, you know, the ad or the, the block response. So one of the ideas that, that I have, if we have to discuss this internally, is to root Smoke Signal's website uh, through a different domain, maybe using something like Cloudflare, 
where we just proxy the traffic so that it, it's, it's reached for, through a different domain, but the endpoint in the back end is something else just to get the users on the platform to use it, not necessarily building the smoke signal link trust, which is you know, um, a downside. But at this stage, I think our number one objective is to get people to start using the platform regularly so that we can start getting that mass effect. So that's an idea I had, uh, but we have to discuss that in depth a bit more internally. Just a, just a question for you for the sake of the friar, since you've mentioned that a bunch of times in standups and other meetings. Uh, but like how challenging has, um, has the marketing of this been for you compared to uh, some of the other things you've done? Um, <laughs> I think I, I probably have a few new gray hairs. Um, when we run ads, you know, on different platforms or, or different businesses and products, it's always sort of minutes to hours of approval and you can just start running and start doing your marketing and you don't have any stumbling blocks because um, with a lot of the e-commerce marketing, um, you know, your privacy policies and terms and conditions, those are sort of pretty set things that you can use um, and just, you know, modify a bit according to your needs. But I think another difficult thing about this project is um, not only um, can't we go and look for competitors and look what they're doing and sort of work a strategy, but you know, there are no competitors or um, we were able to find a few people like people thought I mentioned, but none of them work exactly the way smoke signal does. Yeah. Um, they sort of, all of them all sort of have that censorship. It's a blockchain based, but it's not completely censorship free. Um, mm -hmm. So it's been a challenge because we have to make quite a lot of assumptions. Um, and I think that sort of nicely touches on the, on the, analytics thing that, that I also want to show the community on how do we actually find the users and advertise to them. So yeah, quite mm. challenging, I would say. Yeah, yeah, that, that uh, yeah, I'm, I'm glad it's not just us. Guys, I, I, I've worked with Chris before on some other projects and he's very good at this marketing thing. So if he says that it's uh, got its challenges, um, it's really got its challenges. Um, are there any features, by the way, to Smoke Signal this week that got released? Um, so Ronin was uh, out of action for a bit. Uh, no new features released, but um, the things that we were working on um, was Facebook Pixel. So at the stage, um, Facebook categorizes their users into three different categories. And we're currently only advertising to the awareness category, which sort of only makes people aware of smoke signal, but they don't necessarily take action on the platform because Facebook knows within their user base who will take action and who will not. And in order to advertise to people that take action, you have to have the Facebook pixel on your site, which then sends those events back and then tells Facebook, this guy just performed a valuable action. Mm -hmm. as same as we're talking in Google Analytics. So we've been implementing those uh, pixels, which is quite a lot of events in the back end and so that we can start running more of those ads as well but and um, that's not really something we can show the community it's, it's more of a back back end thing um and then we've also uh, continued working on refactoring the post post list code which is currently quite heavy on your browser so we're making that more optimal less heavy okay. yeah. pardon you say post list code just what is that exactly so it's the code that generates these post lists. Uh, uh, post list. I heard post, post lists. I thought, it, okay, yeah. <laughs> post list, post list code. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so we're working on refactoring that um, to make it more efficient and also so that we can um, not only show posts here, but also comments um, because comments can also be tipped and they can, you can also burn on the comments for them to rank higher. So currently these only show the posts, but we want to also show comments on posts in this list. But the list code is, is not currently designed to actually show stuff nested within a post. So we, we've we refactored that code to in order to facilitate um, that as well. So those are the two main big changes in Smoke Signal. Okay. okay. And then we've created uh, probably more than 10 new feature tickets in the backlog 
um, for this week after seeing how people use the site. And also, um, as people start using the site and we start replying to their comments, we're also using the site in a different way as we used to, which means yeah. we're also yeah. noticing things that are lacking. For instance, um, when, when I go on my phone on smoke signal, um, people might post uh, some text in a comment that you want to research. So you want to sort of just copy and highlight that text, but for some reason that doesn't work. So, you know, small little usability bugs that, that are quick wins that we can fix that just makes the site more usable in general. So we've created quite a lot of, of new features and bugs that we want to implement and fix. Okay. Okay. Hopefully we don't want to implement the bugs. Hopefully we want to implement the features and fix the bugs. <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, okay, cool. Yeah. Well, basically, uh, do you have anything else from your side, Chris? Um, I just briefly wanted to show the community how we actually find um, audiences and things. Cool. Um, so oh, yeah. we look, cool. Yeah. We look at um, Twitter accounts specifically because um, the data is more available for analysis. Um, on Facebook, there's no uh, easy way to modify or to um, to look at a page on Facebook and try and figure out who's following that page, who is its audience. Um, Twitter makes that data available to us. Um, so we're looking at people like Digital Asset News or Sheldon Evans. They've got um, very big active Twitter and Facebook accounts, but we can then use their Twitter accounts. Um, and this allows us to, to really, uh, there's a lot of opportunity here. Uh, just a quick thing, you know, if you're looking at the most influential people that follow this guy, for instance, um, we can then we can then not only analyze his account, but we can also go and analyze their accounts. Mm -hmm. And and that's where I'm touching on on one of the um, assumptions from earlier. Uh, one of the quick ways of um, if you let's say you launch a new marketing tool and you want to know what social accounts should you be looking at to figure out who will be using your tool. You can then do an easy, simple Google search and then look at the related searches and tools that people use. And all of these are uh, very well-known marketing tools. And you can then go and look at each of these accounts, see how they overlap. And if they do, you know, you know, users within that audience is going to use my tool. But for Smoke Signal, we don't have that. So what we have to do is we have to look at um, industry relevant things, which is a bit broader. Um, we, we look at cryptocurrency pages um, specifically, and we then make that assumption that um, people that are um, enthusiasts in this industry that follow these guys will definitely also be wanting to use the platform or buy fry or one of those things. Um, and so one of the you know quick metrics that we can look at is, and this thing basically takes about 5,000 users and then plots it for you in a map to show um, where the more, uh, most accurate users are. Now, it's not 100% accurate, but it gives us a very good indication of um, where we should be trying to reach people. And it's, it's quite interesting that, um, that this guy has such a big following from, from London specifically. Um, so just, would you mind just zooming out? I just want to see where the hotspots are. Well, what I find interesting is that the hotspots seem to be, um, you know, uh, they, they seem to be the East Coast, well, sorry, the West Coast in America and Los Angeles. I think you showed me this earlier. You just get the bottom, the large bottom red one in America. I just want to see if that is Miami or which one that is. Huh. So this is Georgia, Florida, um, Lou, um, Texas, Houston, I think it's also being counted as part of that one. Okay. Um, so quite big cities that Dallas, um, San Antonio, and and these are all um, big cities that that people um, that are enthusiasts and that are and, and this guy is giving a lot of crypto sort of news. Whereas um, you know Sheldon also gives news, but he he often talks about a new coin that you can invest in to make big gains. Mm -hmm. um, whereas digital asset news, he, every day he takes about three or four articles from the crypto news and he, he puts it on a channel and then talks about it. Um, 
and always says he doesn't give financial advice. But um, what, what's very interesting is if we look at um, the two accounts, um, the hotspots are not exactly the same, but they're very similar. And, um, you know, this sort of confirms that um, those are the locations that the most active people are in. And um, we can then, instead of targeting the whole world with a budget, I mean, um, in our audience, it can be a few million users. Um, we take a smaller sample and we, we, we go through them quicker, we mine the data quicker to see which ones are performing the actions on our site and that helps us then to create a, an audience. So although this you know, is an interesting fact, it's, it's also a very good way of um, reaching your wanted audience quicker and also um, more effectively in terms of who you reach for the spend. So you're not paying to reach users that aren't interested in your product or service. Okay. Yeah, I think um, last thing I just want to mention, I think somebody in the community did mention the Brave browser um, reach out uh, for advertising on there. And we have uh, reached out to them a few days ago to start using their platform for advertising as well. Um, they haven't responded to us yet, so I've manually reached out to them again today on their email address, not, not only their form. Um, yeah, so we're still waiting for some response from them, and perhaps we'll soon be able to use uh, their platform as well, but uh, we'll just see what they say about, you know, whether they allow us to advertise to their users. So that might also be a very good um, opportunity for smoke signal. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, so do you have anything else on the marketing stuff or can I? Yeah, I think that's it. That's it from my side for now. Um, okay, can you just enable share screen for me, please? And then I can share some screen. Okay. All right, let's quickly see here where I can share. Okay, so um, can you see, you should be able to see only the... Um, uh, uniswap.info page, right? Yes, take that, yeah. All right, so, um, yeah, so a couple of things I just want to point out um, in terms of how, how like, the marketing actually, it's, it's very interesting because it, it, it reflects very directly into, um, into the price of fry and to the volume of fry traded. Um, this first bump that we saw here, this was when a friend of ours, uh, Scotty Bueta, listed, um, he actually listed the initial liquidity and then independently people on um, 4chan uh, who were monitoring his accounts actually saw that it was him who listed it. Um, and that's kind of like, we, we didn't actually list, even list the initial liquidity. Then we did, um, we did a few interviews. One of them was with Igor Banislav, who is a very, very interesting person. Um, you know, and we had a very nice interview with him and then Fonship and Macro CRG on Twitter picked up on him and uh, they retweeted us. So we went up to a ludicrous, I think it was, uh, this chart's a little broken. It actually goes up to about 20 cents, I think was the, was the pre-peak price there. And, um, you know, for all the friars who've been around a while, as you know, the bucket sale um, does continuously issue new fry, um, at least until the end of the bucket sale. Um, but at that stage, there was too little liquidity and the, you know, if I, if I just switch to the liquidity here quickly, uh, yeah, you'll see that that was the bump over there. So there was very little liquidity. It was only about 56, uh, $57,000 uh, worth of liquidity. So the sale basically arbitraged a lot of the difference out there. Um, yeah. And then, um, essentially we, uh, yeah, we, we've now gone through several different like, um, pushes here as well. That, that push there was a 4chan, um, biz push, by the way, uh, Chris, if you want to make a note of that 4chan does have banner ads as well. We pursued them, I think a while before you actually joined the team. Um, but yeah, so 4chan has been, you know, it, it's been pretty interesting as well. What I just want to point out here is what I find interesting is if you look at the bottom of the graph, right? So, I mean, I haven't done the, I, I haven't actually mapped out, maybe I should do that in Excel, where I just map out the bottom prices, but you'll actually see this bottom forming like a bowl. 
and the bottom price continuously rising upwards, which I find very, very interesting. Um, yeah, so this latest bump here, um, I just wanna, just wanna quickly look here at the volumes uh, for all time. Okay, so, so we still had like, uh, okay, so I believe this volume, you know, this is the total volume now. So we, we still haven't quite equaled that initial volume from uh, Fondship and uh, Macro CRG. Um, I think if we were to, if we were able to, to get a similar bump now, I, I think that would be very, very interesting and, and quite sustainable actually. Um, let me just quickly get back here. Okay, sorry, to the liquidity. All right, so, so yeah, so you guys can also see how our liquidity has continuously been raising. It seems like the primary um, driver of liquidity is actually not our, our farming programs, but actually our, um, you know, actually just, again, marketing and exposure to um, other people. Um, yeah, and that little bump there was essentially when uh, we posted on Reddit, um, Vitalik left a, uh, a very, I'd say it was a very uh, neutral comment. He just said it was interesting, basically. But uh, when Vitalik says something is interesting, obviously, the crypto sphere goes insane. So yeah, so that's, that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, so um, I do think we're making a lot of progress, actually. Like, I, I think this is one of the most, um, how can I say, well, one of the most reliable metrics, because the more fry holders we have, um, basically, the more people we have who really, like, have a deep incentive to see the products of Foundry succeed. Um, I think we've gone up from, um, I think, just under 400 um, around here somewhere. We, we've gone up to about, uh, I think it's about almost 600 now, um, you know, unique fry addresses that I think is pretty nifty. So, you know, it, it it's a very, very significant price bump with every um, um, fry holder that we actually gain. So that's pretty impressive in my opinion. Um, okay, so just another quick thing here. Uh, let me just quickly stop the screen share and I just wanna cover a few more questions. Uh, well, just a quick thing I wanna point out on that on that yes. point is that we, we've actually been marketing smoke signal um, and you know, I think there's still, still some merit in, in marketing Foundry, but um, just the effect of marketing um, one of the smoke signal or one, one of the Foundry projects, what that is doing to the main project, you know, people, the eyes on the on the product sort of maps back to the project and they go and sort of buy that token. And um, we've also, uh, one of the things we've added to the backlog is, is making some of the explainers a bit more open or easy to understand because we also see people joining the community and then asking, you know, what is Fry? So they saw maybe Smoke Signal, it's, it, it looks like an interesting platform. They think it can go somewhere. They want to acquire the token. They then go to Foundry and buy it or they join the Telegram and they ask what it is. So we, we also have um, on the roadmap a page to create on um, smoke signal that covers you know what is fry and how does that link to smoke signal mm. so you can be part of it not only posting and using the forum but also actually buying um the the fry token so just also a quick thing i wanted to mention quite interesting to see how that actually drives up the fry price yeah yeah that that, that is interesting i mean i mean um i think rightly so logan uh you know logan is the as the leader of this uh, band of merry men basically focuses very little on the fry price, which I think is an extremely healthy thing to do. Uh, yeah, but I, I think we're at a good place in terms of like actually focusing on the products. You know, I, yeah. I really like that about our, our whole strategy and stuff is that we do focus on pushing the products up. Um, speaking of products, um, there were some questions that Quadrilog um, asked us, uh, that Logan asked me to just answer on the, to get them here, um, just answer on the uh, chat. So the one thing was basically, okay, so the death updates. Okay, so at the moment, the death contract is with the auditor. Um, the auditor said that he'd get back to us by the 26th. So if we get a clean bill of health, uh, we basically have an audit. Um, yeah, and I think if we, once we have an audit, um, I think there's some internal processes, uh, just some internal discussions that we'll have as to whether or not we can launch the death pro uh, project as is. Um, I have an external contractor who's also building um, some F-sharp tests at the moment for, uh, you know, he's, he's, he's been doing it a while. Um, building some F-sharp tests for the death contract. 
Um, yeah, but I think if we if we have a clean bill of health from the auditor, uh, it's just a question of us internally deciding how comfortable we are with uh, releasing it. So hopefully that happens very soon. Um, like I said, on the 26th, the auditor, the 26th uh, was the date the auditor did uh, give us to get back to us. All right. Um, next question here is uh, yeah, request to eventually resume development on diehard, possibly impl implementing a diehard vendor trust rating system via smoke signal. Okay, so as you guys uh, might be aware, the first thing um, Logan and I did together was uh, build diehard. Um, and diehard, unfortunately, was a very, very hard thing to market. We actually approached Chris as well at that stage to try and help us uh, get the thing to market. But um, it proved very, very difficult, uh, just simply because it's a it's a two sided market, and you sort of need an existing network to bootstrap the thing. Um, yeah, in terms of us uh, resuscitating it and uh, pushing it again, absolutely. Like uh, that, that's just a resource question. Um, if we have a sufficient amount of funds in the treasury, oh, I actually forgot this point as well, but I'll, I'll get to that now. But if we have a sufficient amount of funds in the tre treasury, like uh, obviously DieHard is working, it's a fully functional pro uh, product. Um, it works on both XDI and um, Ethereum mainnet. It is very straightforward to port to other systems. Yes, absolutely. Um, it'll absolutely be on the cards. It's just a question of gaining a sufficient amount of income for us to actually appoint resources to um, uh, push the marketing of Die Hard because that's the only real um, remaining item. There's marketing and maybe some um, client iteration. Then another question that um, Quadrilog had was, uh, ask about the possibility of Fry token being burnt via smoke signal making Fry deflationary. Um, I've mentioned this a couple of times um, in the chat, and I think I've mentioned it in the demo days as well, but, but the way that the current um, smoke signal contracts work, to my knowledge, is that we have a place where, the, um, where basically the burn gets sent. So currently it gets sent to 0x0, zero zero, which is obviously the burn address, but that could be something else. Right, and that is under the control of the um, owner contract of Smoke Signal, um, which I think currently is the Team Toast multi sig. But we could make that the um, treasury account of uh, Foundry. So what we could do under that circumstances, we could redirect that there is a um, we can build a contract that all that it does is it just goes to Uniswap, um, buys uh, Fry tokens with whatever tokens it has, and essentially just burns those. So in other words, it'll have a little poke button and, and then that's what we could do. And I'm massively in favor of that. Currently, we get about 1% of the burn goes to the um, uh, treasury at the moment. Um, but those are very low amounts. I don't think it breaks the game theory in any way if we do this kind of like an indirect burn. Um, yeah, so I, in my view, it's definitely possible. I think what we'll have to do is we'll have to put it up to a sentiment vote um, as to whether or not the community wants to do that. Um, I do want to write a post at some point about what I just want to call, well, I, I'm sort of tentatively calling it the rule of law uh, versus the rule of, of people. Um, and the idea is that when we build a thing like smoke signal, there are certain base assumptions that have to count, right? We can't, as a DAO, vote the base assumptions out of existence just because we want to make money. If we break the base assumptions, we'll probably break people wanting to use um, smoke signal as well. Um, so, yeah, so this might be along the same line as uh, burning fry to make fry a deflationary token. I think we can accomplish it without breaking any of the base assumptions of how uh, smoke signal is supposed to work. The more reason to get um, activity on uh, smoke signal, if, if, you know, if that goes to a vote and it is decided that we do implement that, um, if we already have some nice volumes of people posting on the platform using it, um, this will just make it deflationary so much faster. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, it, it absolutely will. Um, and I think the thing is also like, it's, an, it's a nice circular relationship because um, the more people who have fry tokens, you know, uh, the more people there are who are incentivized to actually be marketers for us. Um, yeah. Yeah, so I, I think that's super duper positive, actually. Um, and then obviously, the more Fry in increases in value, the more 
fry holders we will have, et cetera, et cetera. So it's, it's an interesting, I, I think it's a very nicely aligned set of interest. Yeah, definitely. Okay, was there anything else? I see no one else joined our chat today. Guys, you mentioned when you, when you were on the resource thing, you wanted to say, say something and get back to it. So I don't know whether you still had something to mention on the resources, smoke signal resources. Oh yeah, the resources basically. Okay, so, um, so let me just quickly see. I just wanna see if I can open this up before I share a screen. Um, Oh yeah, yeah. Let me let me get here quickly. This is this is very nice. I like this. Uh, okay. Okay. So so basically, around here on the um, when was this basically? So the let me just get the accuracy here correct. Okay. Right. So. Uh, you know, somewhere around here was when we, well, this doesn't seem correct, it's on the 20th, okay, all right, yeah, so it was on the 20th, I think on the 19th that Logan posted about the um, the resolution here is just too low, it was about here on the 19th that uh, Logan posted on Reddit about uh, smoke signal, and then uh, Vitalik had his uh, non-negative, that's as best I can describe it, his non-negative comment um, about smoke signal being an interesting project. And then some Twitter influencers retweeted that, and then we basically got this, um, this bump in the price. Uh, but yeah, so as, as you guys who've been around a little bit longer now should uh, realize by now, you can actually arbitrage the secondary market or Uniswap and uh, Balancer where we're listed at the moment into the primary sale. So you could actually like use, uh, you know, you could buy on the primary sale and then go sell in the market and then buy on the primary sale again. Um, yeah, and uh, that looks to be what happened here. So um, yeah, so basically we had a give or take 37, $38,000 bump in the treasury amounts. Um, just over that short period of time, which I um, very, very much like. So uh, yeah, so we made more. Um, so so I know what the uh, angel investment was in this thing at the beginning. So we made more thanks to that Reddit post and the uh, retweeting of that thing than uh, what the angel investment was up until before the sale. You know, we made that in a question of I think something like six hours. So yeah, so that was that was very cool. Um, that was very very cool. Um, my personal target for Foundry as a DAO to have enough money to do something interesting in a bear market is about three million. So we're currently here at about uh, what's the total now? Yeah, so thirty one thousand dollars. I mean, guys, I mean there are bigger DAOs out there, but I'm just so proud of this. It's so cool. So we're at about thirty one thousand die. Um, my my target for the end of the sale is I want to see us at three million dollars inside of the treasury, and I definitely think that that's going to happen. And as time goes by, uh, the inflationary effect of new fry from the sale becomes less and less and less and less, and will have less and less of an impact, and we'll be able to um, hopefully grow the. Uh, treasury a lot and actually grow the fry price considerably. Ooh. Sounds very exciting and positive. Google. Anything else from your side, Chris? Um, no, I think that's it from my side. Uh, yeah. Okay. Awesome source. Thanks, man. Have a nice day. You too. Have a nice weekend. Okay, bye. Okay. All right.